Hey there, it's Melissa with MelissaEsplin.com here to share with you a couple of tips and tricks on how to get on board the embossing trend. This is great if you're a litterer or a calligrapher, particularly if you do pointy pen. Um, big shout out to Close to My Heart for providing us for the materials for this tutorial and um, I hope you enjoy and give it a try. Uh, stay tuned. Close to my heart was awesome to send me a bunch of these materials to try out. Uh, included in them was this awesome little embosser, this heat tool, um, silver, white, and gold embossing powder, this Versamark ink refill, which typically is used in the, the ink pads, the stamping pads. So I thought I'd try it and see if I could use that as ink. Um, and you know what, I tried it and it's not that great because it's super sticky. It's good for stamping, but it, it's going to gum up any nibs, um, especially if you're doing pointed pen or brushes, if you particularly like your brushes. I found that um, I could dilute it with alcohol to make an ink, but it again, it gummed up my brushes, so if I wanted like a really bristly like look, I could go for a crappy junk brush and I could just toss it at the end, but it wasn't totally ideal for optim optimal con control. So I opted for glycerin. I, I heard it somewhere that you can use glycerin, so I thought I'd give it a try, and it, I've found really great results. And I diluted about one to one ratio with uh, water. If you do add too much water, you can always just let this jar sit out, especially in the summer months the water will naturally just evaporate. It's about a little bit looser than milk-like consistency. So a little bit about my setup. I've got a very thin paper underneath what I'm working on. I'm using a Strathmore 500 series Bristol paper. You wanna use a nicer paper. Um, the glycerin is going to bleed and feather if you use a crappier paper. You really just have to experiment on what works best for you. Um, so um, I'm using the Gillette 404. The Gillette 404 is a great uh, beginner nib, first of all, uh, but it also has a bolder point, and that bolder point is going to lay down a, th a thicker line. And that's going to work to your advantage when creating sharp hairlines with this embossing powder. Uh, it's a little less flexible than most nibs, but I like that for this purpose because you're not laying down a ton of glycerin. Again, talking about bleeding, if you're laying down too much glycerin, then you're gonna have an excess of embossing powder and you're, you'll have bubbling with your work or you'll have an excess of glycerin and it'll end up bleeding on your paper and then it'll just blow out your lines when you add the powder later. And it's a cheap nib so that if I do end up destroying this nib with the glycerin, no big deal. Without any further ado, I'm going to write just something simple. You can't really see what I'm doing. The angle is just a little bit tough. I just view it at an angle to the light so that I can see what's going on. So it really does work best if you do have a decent amount of light in your studio. So if you're working in a dungeon type space, you're gonna have some issues. So. All right, I wrote out my phrase. I'm not gonna let it dry. I'm just gonna immediately dump the powder on here and I'm pretty generous with dumping it on here. Which is why I have the thin sheet underneath it. See, you get this nice crisp line. Now I'm going to just put everything back into the jar. You really can do some mixed media work, which is also super fun. Okay, so you can see this now. Um, I'm going to get the heat tool, turn it on. I'm gonna keep it about two to three inches away from my piece and just watch until it melts and then move on to the next piece. Here we go. I feel like it turned out really lovely. Okay, let's see what happens when we add watercolor on top. 
I'm using this watercolor set from Close to My Heart. It's got a lot of really fun, trendy colors that are in the jewel tones. I'm just gonna do a nice little wash over top. What's cool is the watercolor is just going around the embossed work and it looks super rad. Look how cool that is. Okay, so we just did the pointed pen. Let's see how the brush works with the glycerin. And you just position yourself so you can see what's going on. Otherwise you'll spell things wrong. I spelled birthday with two D's earlier. And the cool thing about um, doing embossing is it's completely opaque. So if you're unsure about your work and you really need to pencil it out, go for it and pencil it out. But just make sure that you're going directly over your pencil lines, then you don't have to raise anything. So um, that makes it a little easier on you for the spacing and everything. All right, moment of truth. Look at how fun that turned out. Really bold, awesome lines. So let's emboss that and watercolor it. Not sure if you can see this, but up towards the H, I got a lot of glycerin on the page. So it's important, especially when you're using the brush, that you wipe the excess from your brush before you start lettering. So you're lettering with very small amount of glycerin. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with the results. And I really love these powders as well. They're, they're really nice colors. They're great to work with. They don't char or boil. Uh, overall, very impressed. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to check out my work on Instagram at Melissifer and at CalligraphyORG. If you'd like to learn calligraphy, check out calligraphy.org for more information and one-on-one -on -one classes.